sixth Sunday of Easter, May 17th, 2020. It's the third Sunday in May, the Sunday we make special prayer, special intention for healing. So join us toward the end of this service and, and pray for those that you know that could, that could use God's healing. Our God is mighty and gracious and willing and ready to heal us. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ mm -hmm. our Lord. Amen. Amen. with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul stood in, from the, 
in front of the Arapapus and said, Athenians, I see how strongly religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live, move, and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. But you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God. I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. A reading from the Epistle of Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your own good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once and for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. 
when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water and baptism, which is prefigured, which has prefigured now saves you. Not as a renewal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and who is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks, Thanks. Thank God. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you Lord Christ. Jesus said, if you love me you will keep my commandment and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. 
You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. If your time in quarantine looks anything like ours, your television screen time has increased a good bit. I found myself clicking around on the, on the television, looking for something that I end up calling chewing gum for the brain something with no educational value in it whatsoever. It just keeps me distracted from the dogs barking or the lawnmowers going in the neighborhood or whatever else I'm procrastinating from doing. I watched a lot of competition shows on television, especially the cooking competition shows um, on the cooking channel and the food network or whatever. And there are those ones where they give somebody cilantro, sesame seeds, and pickled okra, and they make a dessert out of it. If you haven't seen that, it's really fun. And it's like the producers of the show are just having this really perverse pleasure in making these, you know, combinations so horrible just to torture the contestants. They're just horrible. And there are baking contests too, where if one contestant gets to an ingredient first, they can hide it and keep it from the other contestant. And it's, you know, that's all fair game. After all, they have no problems hiding it. You know, they're there to win. It's, you know, a competition after all. And they've come to win. And we sit taking some pleasure watching this misfortune of another person. That's called schadenfreude. When did I become someone who took pleasure in watching the misfortune of another person? But I became a little uncomfortable about that when I started watching another set of programs where I saw the kids version of these same programs. They got the same weird ingredients or the same strange bakings. But if one of their fellow contestants fell behind in the competition or started having trouble, other contestants, other little kids, seven and eight years old, would come over and they'd say, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me get you back so you can finish. It was as if those ch those children had something that contestants, other adult contestants, didn't have. They seemed to have lost that. They didn't have Schadenfreude. They had what Africans call Ubuntu. We've talked about Ubuntu at, at Advent before, but it bears repeating. Ubuntu means I am because we are. Ubuntu may be said to mean humanity or humanity toward others. Another way of looking at it is how can I be happy if the rest of us are not happy? The word is African, but whether it's Mbuni Bantu or Zulu or Tosa, it's not important where it came from, South Africa, or whether it came from the North. It means we're all connected, and our connectedness is more important than our differences. Sometimes lately, I don't feel like I am, because it feels like we're not. We're not together. 
we're not connected in the way we always have. So I've been listening to these words of Jesus that he taught his disciples. This reading from John's Gospel is what is known as Jesus' farewell discourse, part of that farewell discourse. He's teaching the disciples the most important things for them to remember. He's giving them assurances that they will not be left wandering alone, but they will be sent and advocate to be with them forever. He called that advocate the spirit of truth that the world cannot receive because it does, neither sees him nor knows him. You know them, he said. You know him because he abides with you, he lives with you, and he will be in you. And a bit further down, at the other end of that reading, it says in that great Johannine way, you will know that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I in you. There's another 50 cent word for that too, perichoresis. And perichoresis is a way of describing the Holy Trinity in three persons, where all three are dwelling inside each other in this wonderful co-inherent way, dancing in love and delight together endlessly giving to each other in that delight. And Jesus is saying that he is in us and we are in him and we are all part of that wonderful, magnificent gift. We are part of that because we are in him. He is in us. God is in us. Spirit is in us. We are in the spirit. We're in that thing. We're not alone. And we're not going to. Now, I admit, it's impossible to describe the Trinity without committing some sort of heresy, and I'm not going to go any further than that. But I think what he's saying is that he was in this wonderful dance, and he took us, he took them, he's taking us with him, and that we all join in this dance with love, and we keep Jesus' name. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Okay, so what were Jesus' commandments in John's gospel? I went back and I started looking. Well, there's one at the beginning and one at the end. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, well, that's two of the five that I found in John's gospel. Um, there's one in John 3. 5 to 7, which says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, well, we've got baptism there. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. John 21, which we've just recently heard, said, Simon, do you love me? Feed my sheep, tend my lambs. That's another. And then those three of them right there. So in John 13, 34 to 35, and repeated in John 15, 12, basically the same words, Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And I think that's, that's what we're doing here. I think that's what the bottom line is going to be. That's what it's going to be. Love one another. During this time of COVID-19, as we desperately want to be back together in our church building, and to receive Holy Communion in both kinds, when we want more than ever to shake hands with little people like Jenny's children and big people and to hug our friends that we haven't hugged in months, to sing louder than we ever have and don't care whether we're on here or not, 
to crowd the aisle, to laugh at Kevin's loud sneezes instead of recoiling in horror to pass our offering baskets from Louis from hand to hand to hand, to have coffee and snacks together and chat with friends, to pray out loud for all those we love without worrying about privacy laws on broadcasts. And today, to anoint with oil and lay hands on for those who wish prayers for healing for themselves or for others, because that's how Adventists had to show our love for one another. That's how we show our Ubuntu, or at least that's how we've always done it. This is a new time. It's a new day, a different day. We'll still find ways to have Ubuntu over telephone and through Zoom as we show our humanity and care for one another by staying apart from one another, which seems like a strange way to share love. We will show our love by wearing masks and other PPE when we are allowed to gather, because we're not because we're afraid for ourselves but because we love each other. More than ever, we are because you are, and you are because we are. And Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit are all dancing in all of us, wherever we are. In just that holy dance of love, humanity, and hospitality, we just have to be friends. Thanks be to God. Amen. Join me as we affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him and all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. 
that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that we who have been raised with him may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your servants and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs so that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God the Father bless you. God the Son heal you. God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the Holy and Undivided Trinity guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to his heavenly country, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Sanctify, O Lord, those whom you have called to the study and practice of the arts of healing and to the prevention of disease and pain. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit, that by their ministries the health of the community may be promoted and your creation glorified through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with the spiritual communion, beginning with the words of Psalm 63. O God, you are my God, Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself, and my lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand holds me fast. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Alleluia, alleluia. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. 
In union, O Lord, with the faithful of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, gave you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you.